So when we think about MPV and, and IRR in terms of uh, measures or ways of evaluating projects that we might take at our firm, uh, you might inevitably ask yourself the question, well, is one better? Is one of these superior to the other? Uh, and, and let's just do a quick review. So when we think of MPV, we're thinking of uh, wealth that's being added uh, to the firm, right? Over and above uh, what could have been earned uh, with, with the opportunity cost, uh, the discount rate. And when we think of IRR, we're ultimately going to come up with this rate uh, that, that would make the MPV equal to zero. Okay, we're ultimately that's that's what we're calculating and finding, and, and these things are going to give us you know decision rules of with the MPV if the MPV is uh, greater than zero, uh, then accept, and then with the IRR ultimately if this rate uh, the big R as we talked about in the other video is is smaller th or larger than the discount rate, uh, then we're going to accept. And so it, is one of these better? Is something superior? Which is better? Now. Both of these are, are really effective methods, but it's important to note that the IRR cannot always uh, be used. IRR is sometimes a problem. That doesn't mean that it's a, a bad metric or, or necessarily worse, but it's important to know when. When is it a problem? And that's what we're going to talk about here. Sometimes when it's actually better to use MPV because the IRR is going to create some kind of an issue. Uh, so let's look at a situation where we have a project. Let's give an example here. We've got this project. And then here are going to be the cash flows for this project. So we, we've got, uh, got two periods here. So at the beginning, uh, we're going to have a cash outflow of, of $8,000. Uh, and then we're going to have a cash inflow of 50000 at the end of year one. And then we're going to have another cash outflow of $50,000 at the end. Now, what's, what's an issue with this? Well, when we calculate the IRR, uh, we're actually going to come up with, with two different rates here. We're going to have two possible solutions. We have 25% and we're going to have 400%. So we've actually got multiple solutions there. Uh, and as we remember, our, our decision rule with IRR is, is looking at the, the rate that we calculate and then comparing it to that discount rate. But if we have two different rates, uh, well, that doesn't help us very much. Uh, so that, that can be an issue. Uh, another issue, let's look at a project. Uh, let's look at a different project here. So this is, uh, we'll call this example two. This is, this is uh, different than the other one. So now we've got, we've got a cash outflow, let's say, of 1,000 in period zero uh, up front. And then we have uh, a cash inflow of 3,000 at the end of period one. And then we have a cash outflow of, of 2,500 at the end of, of year two. So what, what's an issue here? Well, an issue here is that we actually do not have an IRR for this. Okay, well, what does that mean? It means that, well, let's think about it. The IRR, we're trying to find the rate of return that would make the MPV equal to zero. And, and we're going to have to plug in numbers and, and, you know, and, and try to find that R, that big R, that's going to make MPV zero. And, and there's not a value that does that, uh, given these, uh, these numbers here. So we can look and see maybe a kind of a pattern is that sometimes we, when we have a kind of an IRR where there's just a negative cash flow in the beginning and then a bunch of positive cash flows going forward, uh, we're not going to run into these problems. But what happens is, see us now we've got we've got a negative cash flow that's following a positive cash flow. So we got negative up front is fine, and then positive, but then you have another negative one. We have the kind of these alternating back and forth, you know, negative positive, then another uh, you know cash outflow. That's typically going to create problems with the IRR, uh, whether. You know, and here we have it again, where you get the negative and then positive, and that's fine. Uh, but then this this next one becomes negative again, and so you're going to have you know multiple solutions or no solution at all, and, and so these are going to cause issues. And in those cases, you actually prefer uh, to use the MPV. But let's think about something else. Let's think about uh, something called uh, mutually exclusive projects. Now what do we mean when we're talking about mutually exclusive? Well we mean that you have two different projects 
and you can only choose one. You can't say, well, you know, these both look like good projects. Let's do them both. Uh, so we'll have here, we'll have project uh, one. And let's say in project one, uh, we've got the, the following cash flows here. Uh, we've got uh, up front, we're going to pay out $100. And then at the end of year one, this is just a one year project, uh, we get $220 in inflow. Now let's look at another project. We'll just call this, uh, this will be project two. And when we look at project two, we also uh, are going to have just, just a one year uh, project. But this time we're paying out 10,000 up front. And then we're gonna get 16,500 at the end of the project. Uh, so now let's think about the IRRs. I've already calculated them for you. Uh, so when we look at the IRR of project one, it is 120%. Oh, I should have mentioned I'm using, uh, I'm assuming a 10% discount rate here. I should have mentioned that, I apologize when I work this out. So a discount rate, a little r of 10%. So when we work out for project one, uh, we're going to get an IRR of 120%. Okay, that's the rate that would make the MPV equal to zero. So now let's think about project two. What are we going to have in terms of an IRR uh, for project two? Okay, 65%. Now, one of the advantages of IRR is that it might be easy for managers uh, to look at a rate, uh, a rate of return, and, and make uh, judgments about that and say, okay, this has 120% return uh, or something like that. And it's just easy for people to think about a rate of return. But here it's actually a problem. And here's why. Because we have a larger uh, IRR for project one, uh, but actually we'd probably rather do, if we had to just choose one, if we had, it's just mutually exclusive, we had to just do one of these projects, we'd rather project two uh, because if we look at it, it, it's a lot larger number that we're looking at here. You know, technically, so the return isn't quite uh, as fancy as the one up here, but it's still a good return. And ultimately, uh, when we think of what the MPV would be, it's going to be a lot larger because we're talking about much bigger numbers here. So what does this mean? It means, well, the IRR really isn't uh, taking into consideration the effects of scale. Right, so although this might be a larger uh, rate of return than the second project, uh, really the second project is going to add a lot more wealth uh, to our firm. And so in this case, when we're thinking about mutually exclusive projects, it's probably best that we use MPV instead of the IRR.